What's up, everybody? Welcome to Off the Rails, a recovery podcast dedicated to ending the stigma of addiction through open discussion on all things recovery related. My name is Mark, and with me always are Dave and Jared. And fellas, what is happening? How were your weeks? Good, man. It's been good. Sun's out. (laughs) Beautiful day. Are the guns out? (laughs) Ayo. Uh, are you guys highs and lows this week highs this week yeah uh gosh i i don't i don't know i'm on like day 12 of work here so it's uh my highs having a nice nap yesterday missing the podcast that was a high (laughs) and a low (laughs) okay yeah good um yeah, and highs, just like how good we're doing on this podcast. I'm loving it. Also got these uh, shirts made up. If, if you want to drop a comment in the comments and see if we should make some up. I like that. Dave, yeah, how was your week, man? Uh, my, week's, my week is good, man. Um, <clears throat> back from Timmins, we... Uh, the old team I coached uh, pulled off the win, so we won the uh, NOHAs, which is the Northern Ontario Hockey Association. I guess like the final tournament. No big deal. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty cool. So now we're on to the uh, we do like the OHFs now in Sudbury in a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, it was cool. Like, um, kind of being on the other side of COVID now a little bit, right? Like only a month ago probably it was that we would go to Sudbury and like you can't go into the into the arena till like a half an hour before the game starts and all that crap so there's like tight protocol and now it's like a little more open where we had the opening ceremonies and like the Friday night where there's another age group that was there too like two years younger and so there's like 10 teams on the ice and all these people watching and so it's just kind of cool to have like for the kids to have that experience again because it's been a while and you know, talk, the kids get to talk to each other between games and like, I don't know, it's just nice to kind of, nice to see. I think it's really good for, well, I would say for the kids, but for, you know, for the adults too, like parents and coaches, it's just nice to be kind of back to a bit of normal. So that would definitely be a high. Uh, nice weather that's rolling here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it keeps going. We don't get any more snow up here. Uh, those are my highs. We, we got snow right now. Yeah, we had freezing rain yesterday, the day before, but uh, low. I don't know. I have to get back to you on low. It's a pretty good week, man. So, uh, love to hear. Maybe, Jer- maybe Jared missed in the meeting yesterday the, or thing yesterday. That was my low. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I needed a nap, though. I was, I'm overworking myself. I really got to figure out this podcast work uh meetings family balance here shortly or else i'm gonna just uh run myself into the ground yeah you got a lot going on yeah you pretty exhausted yeah just a uh, diet pepsi and water and just keep on giving her <laughs> and um my oh, was your week still? yeah um Signed up for a basketball league. I'm super stoked on that. Uh, you do have a silky smooth jump shot. Thanks, baby. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, sick. Yeah, I don't know. I played basketball growing up, and, like, I'm looking forward to doing something again. Meet some new you're, friends here. In you're, v- you're very competitive, too, like we saw in rehab. I am very – I am competitive, yeah. We couldn't yeah, leave the know, court till you won. I don't know what the records were, but <laughs> – we left after game one then. <laughs> <laughs> Dave won a couple. I did. Yeah, too, our records, didn't I? Mark Mark definitely led the way. Yeah. And uh I think I snuck out a couple a couple wins. Yeah. I like a rematch sometime though, because I'm thinking you know my athleticism is coming back a little bit more now. I feel that too. I've been in the gym shooting too, though. You don't have to, you don't have to smoke a horse. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm doing that. We could play like a mutual sport that neither one of us plays. 
Spike ball. Cricket. Yeah. Cricket. Cricket. Love that. Golf? Okay. No, you're good. You play golf. Yeah, I'm not good at it, though, anymore. I promise you you're better than me at golf. <laughs> I'm going to focus hard on it this year. I like that. I haven't. I don't remember the last time I golfed not drinking. I've never done that. I, I'd like drink a, a bottle of vodka at seven a.m. before getting to the course. <laughs> Savage. Yeah, yeah no, a lot of stupid <laughs> shit playing golf. Um, I also went to two in-person meetings this week, which was sweet. It's all right. Uh, nice. It's cool to meet some people here and. Uh, Went to a speaker meeting for the first time. That was pretty cool. I don't know if you. They're sweet. That. Yeah, man. Yeah. Someone just gets up and shares their story and talks to you about recovery. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, yeah. There was like, there were so many more people at that one than Tuesday night one. But other than that, man, solid week. Getting settled away, ready for baby. Had some uh, pregnancy photo shoot yesterday. That was sweet. Yes. Those are going on our Instagram. Sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. We can... <laughs> so this is the episode after uh, Brady's interview, right? You bet. Sweet dude. Love the interview. Love what he's doing. Yeah, he's doing yeah. a lot for mental health. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. he's awesome man he's just another guy too with like that crazy energy you know super enthusiastic guy <clears throat> and just passionate and uh it's good to see him in a good place yeah. i yeah. thought it's i think it's kind of cool too like how many different uh ways to recover from addiction and you can just choose your own path as well like his is a bit different than ours yeah but uh whatever works for you is pretty cool i love what he's doing with puck support man i think that's incredible um you know i think i think more attention needs to be brought to that especially not not just in hockey but in all sports and you know there's like that u of t came out with a study where like elite athletes struggle more with mental health uh, issues so like to me there's like super, like several questions you should be asking like why why that's happening and how you can prevent it and you know how we can educate people about that so i think what he's doing is spectacular in that regard and you know it's going to help a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah it sounds like he already is too like you know i asked him about helping out with like you know, Jim Thompson talked about like uh, having someone in place like the NHL or whatever. And it sounds like he's already, and I didn't really know this, like speaking to some junior players and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's cool experience for those kids to, to hear right from a guy that's been through it. Right. And was a really high prospect and kind of seen it all. So that's, uh, it's good. I'm sure he's changing some lives and. Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Ugh. you can cut that <laughs> yeah so he's yeah anyway he's just doing a lot of a lot of good stuff and he's an awesome dude so I'm sure we'll uh have him on and maybe collab with him doing something in the future yeah mm-hmm. it'd be awesome i found like uh you know when i was younger playing sports and i don't know if you guys feel this way or not but like i don't find mental health was talked about when we were younger um very much at all you know, and you were kind of like labeled certain things if you like discuss like if you're depressed or, you know, you're anxious or whatever. Um, do you guys think like having someone in the sports that you played growing up, having someone to like talk to you about, you know, depression, anxiety, et cetera, do you think having someone there like on your teams to talk to would, would help you guys? I think there should be like a full class in school for it like you know there's like a religion class and if you go to a catholic school i think there should be like a full class on if you're feeling this way or whatever what and what to do and how to what to do to prevent it and stuff like a mental health class kind of 
I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I was like always like fat shamed when I was a kid and called fat and it did does take a toll on you. Absolutely. Um, so I think, I think with, uh, having someone in place with it, it definitely wouldn't, wouldn't hurt obviously, um, with a hockey team or whatever sport you're playing, you spend so much time with, with that group, right. It becomes like a, a second family. And I think, you know, whether it's even pressures of hockey or just something you're dealing with outside of that, you might be more out to, to open up to somebody that is in the, you know, your second family type thing, right. Like you're someone you're really close with and perhaps maybe a, a, a school, like a guidance counselor or whatever, you might not, I don't know, hard to say really, but open up as much in that, in that setting than you would maybe, um, with someone that's in the, in the hockey community, if that's what your sport is. Right. If that makes any sense. I don't know. But I also, I also think coaching is progressing a little bit too, in the way that you treat kids and, and athletes and still has a long way to go, but I don't, I try to do my best with how the kids focus on the process and playing proper properly, not so much the putting the stress on the outcomes. Cause I think that can be something that puts a lot of um, mental stress on a kid because you can't really control the outcome. You know, you can only control your effort and what you're doing and the process and how we're trying to play the game. Can't control the balances and all that. So to put so much energy and, you know, effort towards thinking about that result, um, when you can't really do anything about it anyway, is can be taxing. And I don't know. I, I, I could go on to a lot about minor hockey just because I've been around it a lot. And, you know, a lot of stress that the parents have put on their kids. Um, you know, a lot of it has to do probably with a lot of money, like the amount of money they pay nowadays, you know, so the parents want the best for the kids. I don't think there's, there's not a ton of, you know, you talk about hockey parents being crazy or whatever sport you're in. I don't necessarily think that's that's true. I just think they're they want the best for the kids. They don't really know what to do, right? How to do it, and they just everyone's just trying to do their trying to do their best, and a lot of times just throwing money at things. But I don't know. That was just a rant. I might just cut that out. Oh, I think oh, that, you, on, man. that was awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, man, one thing I found, uh, Dave, you might be able to answer this because like. I found when he came forward and talked about like the hazing and stuff like that, like I found that pretty disturbing. And um, do you think uh, like people coming forward and talking about like shit like that uh, can kind of help like people monitor it? Um, I think it can. Like, I think, I think we're, uh, I think that hazing stuff is like we're probably years past that now that and I don't really know that that happens anymore. I could be wrong, but, yeah. I know it's like if it happens in junior and stuff like that, it's it, what they do is a lot more mild. It's more stuff you're not going to get suspended for the rest of your life for, right? Because it's it is monitored highly. Um, it definitely like the stories that that he said. I know I know tons of guys that experienced stuff like that growing up. I mean, I'm almost I'm almost forty, so you know, twenty years ago, or whatever. I think they've come a long way in that in that regard. Um, and it's time to just continue to to progress with everything else too, with mental health and you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think. It. Sorry, I think what I was trying to like ask was like, do you think people coming forward with those stories has helped shift shift it to the right direction where like it's not happening in sports? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. If no, if no one came out and started talking about that stuff, it would still be going on, right? You have your first guy that comes out and. Uh, I don't know how many years ago talks about these stories. And it's like, I, I can remember like one of the first ones when someone came out and talked about it, I was still pretty young and it was like, I, I he almost got ridiculed for, for talking about it. It's like, well, that's just what happens. That's just kind of, you know, yeah. it's kind of known that that's kind of the thing that happens. And, and now we're really far past that. But yeah, if those guys didn't come out back then for sure, it'd still be happy right now. Right. Like, yeah. So well, it's just, yeah, I think that's kind of like, I, I feel that way about pretty much every problem. Um, they need to be talked about. And, you know, uh, 
whether it be like hazing or, you know, in our case, addiction, uh, you know, openly talking about things helps, you know, and the more people that come forward about their problems, um, you know, the easier it is to find a solution. That's just what I think. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts with like mental health and, and like this? I was thinking about this earlier. I was going for a walk when we were kind of going to talk about different things, but like mental health and like professional sports. And what do you think? What do you think would be the biggest contributor to why guys have issues? Do you think? I mean, obviously people just have, you know, genetic issues and whatever, but um, do you think there, if you had to pinpoint one thing, what would you, what would you say? Cause I think I have an answer that I would say we could argue about it, but man, pressure, just, money, man, that's yeah. a sweet question. Um, we should get someone on to talk about that. Yeah, that is a really good question. I have like a, well, I think like, at, like to me, we don't treat people as humans, right? So like we look at professional athletes and we come, we think of them as professional athletes. We don't think of them as humans. So like, you see comments and shit on, on social media, just like bashing the fuck out of these people saying whatever, forgetting other people. And, uh, you know, to me, like the criticism and, and stuff like that, I, I don't think I could take it. So, yeah. Um, you know, um, at the end of the day that they're people and they make mistakes and they still struggle with the same shit that we struggle with. Yeah. Even like the guests we have, coming on on this thursday coming up uh we asked her about that and she kind of just gave the same answer as you just said she she does read the comments and she it does upset her um, yeah so like everyone is human even though you're i don't know a celebrity or you're in the spotlight it, you shouldn't be uh ridiculed dave what do you think man yeah i want I agree with that. I mean, there's lots of, I think there's lots of things that happen, but ultimately I think like, you know, I talk about injuries and, you know, some guys get hooked on that through injuries. And, uh, but I think like money and the access they have is like ultimately the kind of like, you know, probably what leads to the most because they have access to whatever they want, whenever they want. Right. And it might start as, painkillers or sleeping pills to, to go to bed or whatever but then once you have kind of that money to to do what you want um you know aren't you like why wouldn't you try to like alleviate more pain whether it's physical or mental um to try to you know keep playing or you know making a paycheck making some making some money so I mean, I, I play a hockey tournament, talk about physical pain. Like I remember like, this was like years ago, like 15 years ago, playing like a men's league tournament on a weekend. And like my body after four games, I felt like I, I was beaten up really bad, you know, like, I and mean, then that's far cry from the NHL, right? Like yeah. what they go through. So, I mean, they're a little bit better shaped than me probably, but <laughs> still. Um, and I got a question. Do you guys think that like, uh, you know, their loved ones and stuff, they feel so much pressure from the people that are around, right? Because a lot of times these dudes are like, you know, paying for their boys or paying for their family and stuff like that. They feel so much pressure that like people that you could normally go and vent to and go to about your problems, they might be a bit hesitant to go talk to them about it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think so? I don't know. Uh, these are just, I, I just think so. I think so because you're probably scared that your your issues are gonna get out in the public uh, yeah, like, yeah i don't i don't, th I don't think these they have anyone to trust because people try to feed off them and you know what i mean yeah you're yeah. talking about you're talking about like athlete talking like coming home and talking to their their spouse yeah and like family right like oh i thought you meant a friend or something yeah i meant or, like, like kind of like their family and where normally like you should be able to go home and talk to your spouse or talk to your, your parents. Right. But do you think there's like a pressure and like a sense of letting them down? Yeah, there could be that. And as well as just like, they don't have that much home time either. So like, do you want to like go home and like 
talk about your issues or do you want to just kind of pretend everything's okay and and just you know do the the man thing and suck it up and deal with it right i'll show you that's a good point all right fellas um i got a date i got, got a date, date night you gotta take off date night yeah all right sweet all right guys if you or someone you know wants to be on our podcast hit us up and if you or someone you know is struggling with addiction reach out and ask for help thank you so much for listening Bye.